What's going on guys, I hope you're well. Welcome back to part three of my room assistant setup tutorials. If you haven't yet seen those other tutorials, part one and part two will both be linked in the description below. In part one, we go through how to actually install room assistant on the Raspberry Pi. And in part two, we go through setting up an MQTT broker on our Raspberry Pi, which is running home assistant. And if you've watched both of those and you're here for this next bit, then welcome back. So what are we doing today then, Mark? Well, I'm glad you asked. In today's video, we're going to be getting the Raspberry Pi we set up with Room Assistant in the first video connected to the broker that we set up in the second video. And in doing that, we should be able to start tracking a device around our rooms. Let's go and get straight into that stuff then. Jumping straight into it then, we're going to need to open our SSH client. Now, if you're familiar with my other videos or you've been watching this series, you know that I'm a big Mobrex term user. So we're going to need to connect to our Raspberry Pi that we left last time. So in my case, it was kitchen.local. Yours will be whatever you decided to name it. Okay then, so we're connected now to the Pi that we set up Room Assistant on in the first video. We're just connected through SSH. And what we're gonna do is just modify the config that we actually put in at the end of the first video. Now, rather than actually modify it, I've actually just got a new config and it'll be in the description below. So you can just copy and paste that one in. Again, all the commands that I'm going to use in the terminal here, they'll all be linked in the description below um, and they'll be in the order of use. So you can just go and copy and paste those. First up then, we're just going to go into the nano editor to edit the um, local.yaml file for room assistant that we created in the first video. And rather than edit this, I'm actually just going to delete all of this out. So we're just going to remove all that out and then paste the new one in like so. I think I forgot to zoom in on the first bit so I do apologize if you were like squinting or like smushing your face up against the screen to read it. Um, so we've pasted the new config in and there's going to be a couple of parts in this that you're going to need to change. First of all you're going to be able to set your instance name. So the instance name is going to be the name of the room assistant. So whichever room you put this in ideally you'd name it after that room. So if it's in the bedroom obviously bedroom. In my case this one's going in the kitchen so we're just going to call it kitchen. Next up, you're going to need to set your MQTT URL and this will be MQTT forward slash and then it will be the IP address wherever your broker's hosted. In our case, if you're following along with this video tutorial, um, we have actually installed the MQTT broker on the Raspberry Pi in the last video. So it's just the URL for our Raspberry Pi, which Home Assistant is on. So that's just there. Next up then, we've got the username and password. Again, if you're following along with these videos, this is the username and password for the Pi that we created in the broker. You can also use your Home Assistant local username and password here if you want to do that. Again, that would only apply if you're hosting the MQTT broker using the Home Assistant add-on. And last and most importantly, we're going to enter the address or addresses of the device or devices that we want to track. For this example, I'm just going to be tracking one device and it's just my Apple Watch. Room Assistant is really good for tracking these kinds of things. So any kind of wearable tech or your phone or something, you're going to be able to track a person in which room they're in. But you can also use it for static devices. So let's say you want to know where you left something. It could be your keys. You could be tracking the tile, um, the little Bluetooth tile that you get on keys. Or it could be a handheld game console. Literally anything that's got Bluetooth that you want to be able to track, you can track it with this. All you need to do is just enter the Bluetooth address in here. Enough mumbling, I think you get the idea of it. If you want to be able to track your Apple Watch and you're not sure how to get the Bluetooth address, I'll probably put it on screen somewhere, that just the steps in order to get the Bluetooth address. But yeah, let's uh, carry on. So we've entered that config. We're just going to hit Control and X and it's going to ask us if we want to save. We're just going to press the Y key and hit Enter. So that's saved and that's that config done now. Just quickly to show anyone that wasn't sure of what IP address to use, if you followed along and you've added the broker through the Home Assistant add-on, the IP address you'll need will be the address up at the top here. So it'll be that address then. Um, and the username and password is this username and password that we set in the config for the broker. Now, I actually noticed that I would actually had set mine up wrong. I'd used the wrong password. So I'll just go back into it here and I'll adjust the values in here now. So it was password one, two, three for this one. And it's actually also a different IP address. And again, control X, do you want to save? Yes, and enter. Let's go. If you don't use the correct IP address or the correct username and password, you will get errors. If you're using the wrong username and password, you should be able to see those in your broker as long as the IP address is correct and it's connected in. 
you should see a message to say that the user is not authorized or doesn't have access. So I'll, I'll go through and show you what an error would look like. And I'll also show you what it looks like when it actually works. Next up then, we just need to navigate to where Room Assistant is on the Pi. So we'll do that again using the commands in the description. And once we're there, we're just gonna run Room Assistant. This might just take a second, but it's gonna just start booting up Room Assistant now. Now, while that's loading, this is the manual way that you'd go about running Room Assistant. But after we're happy it's working and doing what we want, I'll show you how to um, set up an automatic way. So you can just turn the Pi on and off. And when the Pi comes on, it will just automatically launch Room Assistant. So you don't have to come in and do this every time. So that's loading. Um, the warnings that appear there, don't worry about those. We're expecting those. And we should see a message like this to say that the we were successfully connected to our broker and it will be the IP address of our broker. And again, these cluster service errors, we were expecting to see those. So the warnings at the top and those two at the bottom, we're expecting to see those. So if you do have those as well, it is an expected thing. I've given you a very basic config to start with. So you can go and play around with that if you want. Again, if you go on the Room Assistant website, that config will be broken down into much more detail. So you can have a play around with that. In another video in this Room Assistant tutorial, I'll be coming back to the config and we'll be fine tuning it and going into more detail and adding more bits in so that it can do better tracking and other little bits that we want. But for now, we're just keeping it simple. We just wanna get the product up and running so we can have a play around with it and see how it works and see whether it's something you know we'd wanna actually spend time with and have in our house. So that's running then. If we jump back over now to our Home Assistant, back in Home Assistant land then, if we jump into our supervisor, and we go into our MQTT broker. At the top, if we jump into the log, uh, towards the bottom, we should now see a new entry, which tells us we've had a new connection, and it will be from the IP address of our Pi that we've set Room Assistant up on, and it will also contain the user. So that's our Pi's IP, and the user then is MQTT in my case, and it'll be whatever user you decided to create. So that's all good, that means that it connected and that's fine. We can now go back into configuration and we can go into integrations and we can see now our MQTT integration, it says it's got two devices and five entities. So let's have a look at those now. In the devices, we can see we've got two devices. Now these have automatically been picked up from the Pi passing the information to Home Assistant. So we can see that there's the kitchen and there's Mark's Apple Watch. Let's first have a look at kitchen then. Within this device then, this is my kitchen room assistant and this will be named whatever you decided to name your room assistant instance in the config. We've got three different entities in here. We've got the kitchen Bluetooth inquiries, the kitchen cluster leader and the kisting, <laughs> kisting? kitchen cluster size. Now the cluster things we're going to come back to in a future video where we have a more in-depth look and a more advanced config set up. But as we're staying with the simple config for now, we're just going to put that to one side and just ignore those for now. Um, the other little toggle then is the kitchen Bluetooth inquiries. Now this is just a toggle and if you were to toggle this on and off, it would tell the um, kitchen room assistant to either start or stop sending its information to and from home assistant. That's the kitchen device and we're going to just leave that there for now. So let's hop back and have a look at the next one. Next in here then, we've got Mark's Apple Watch. Now it's pulled this information from um, the watch host name and all we did was give it that Bluetooth address within Home Assistant. So let's jump in that and see what we've got. Inside of this device then, we've got two different entities. The first one is the presence detection. Now this one is gonna tell us which room we're in. So if we've got a few different room assistants set up, if we've got one here, which thinks we're in the kitchen, if we've got one upstairs in the bedroom and one say, in the garage, um, whichever one we were nearest to with our watch, it would connect to that and then it would report which room it was in, in this um, entity here. The second one tells you a simple, are you home or not? So it has the value of home or not home. So if you're not in range or touching or connected to any of these room assistants, you would be not home. And again, you could use either of these then to tie into automations. So you could have an automation based on a particular room you were in or an automation if you were home or not home. Let's add those to our dashboard then, just so that we can see them. So we're just gonna click on here and go add to Lovelace. And we're just gonna add this to our new view. Um, that'll be fine like that, add to Lovelace UI. And then if we just jump to the dashboard and we click on our little dog head, we can see then the little card here that's got information about which room I'm in and also if I'm home or not. In a roundabout way, 
that's actually Room Assistant set up and working now. So we've got our Pi set up with Room Assistant running. We've got the MQTT broker and we've got the Pi talking to the broker, sending it the information on which device we're connected to in the house. Hopefully by following along with these videos, you've managed to get to this day and you've also currently got this basic Room Assistant working. A couple more things that I'm going to show you then is how to troubleshoot some of the issues you may have if you've got some of your config a bit wrong. So we'll have a look at the log and how you can go about resolving those. Then I'm going to show you how to make Room Assistant automatically start. So if you have a power cut or you decide you're going to move it from where it's currently plugged in, you haven't then got to manually SSH in every time and manually trigger Room Assistant to get it running. And after both of those, I'll give you a quick demo of using Room Assistant. Jumping back over then to our terminal, we're just going to exit out of that. So we're going to hit Control and C. That's going to stop Room Assistant then. So we've stopped Room Assistant running. Now what I'm going to do is just make a couple of mistakes in my config just so you can see what would happen if you had something similar and how you'd go about troubleshooting them. Let's go back into the nano editor then. And the first one that I'm going to do is I'm just going to put the wrong password. This would be the same if you had the wrong username. They'd both be the same um, error. Let's just say I put password one, two. I'm going to save that. And then if we run Room Assistant and just wait for it to start. Again, any of those errors are fine for now. Once that's loaded, then we can see we've got an error here that says Home Assistant Service Connection Refused, Not Authorized. So obviously this error is due to us putting the wrong password in. So if you do see that um, error there, it's because you've got the wrong password. You could also get this error message if you put the wrong username in. So make sure whatever username and password you put in your Room Assistant configuration is the same username and password that you've set in your broker. Or if you're using your Home Assistant username and password, make sure that is also correct. Back in the Nano Editor then, I've set the username and password correctly here now, but I'm using the wrong MQTT URL, so the IP address is wrong. So let's just save this and see what happens. And again, once this one's loaded up, we can see we've got another Home Assistant error. And this time it tells us it couldn't connect to the server. So if you've seen this could not connect to server error, it means that your URL is incorrect. So either you're using the wrong IP address for the MQTT broker or your current Room Assistant can't see that on the network. So if you've got them on separate networks, they'll need to be on the same network in order to connect. And that's been two of the most common errors, so the wrong IP or the incorrect username and password. I hope that by showing you those two errors, it's at least helped you if you've got those errors so that you know which route to go in and what to start looking up to help you out. I flipped my Room Assistant config back so it's working again. So let's now create a service so that we can automatically start Room Assistant whenever the Pi starts. So we're going to use the Nano Editor again to create a Room Assistant service. Inside of the service, we're just going to paste in the commands again, which are in the description below. Once we've pasted that into the service, we're just going to hit Control X and we're going to press yes and enter. Next up, we've got two commands that are going to enable the service um, that we've just created. And what that means is that whenever it restarts, then it's going to call this service, which is going to fire off Room Assistant. And the second one is just going to start Room Assistant. So it's just going to start from whenever we enter this. So again, let's just paste those in. So we can see the first one's done that and it's got the second one ready to go. We're just gonna hit enter on the second command here. And there we go, that's the second one done too. Up next then, I've got a very short video showing me moving between two different Raspberry Pi Zero Ws running Room Assistant and they're both tracking my Apple Watch and you should then see the entity change when I move from one to the other. So as a quick demo then, I'm just going to show you how well the current room assistant we've set up works. So I'm currently in the kitchen and I've got a Raspberry Pi Zero W just in here. And that one's set to the kitchen and it's tracking my Apple Watch. And we're just going to move into the dining room and see how long that takes to update. And hopefully that should then uh, change to dining room when we get into that room. So we're off on a little walk. Okay, so we're in the dining room now, and that should have changed. Just in case you were wondering what I was looking at when I was looking down, I've got a tablet here that's usually wall mounted, and it was just showing me the current state of that track in there. And there we go, guys. If you've been following along with these videos, you should now have a working version of Room Assistant, and you should be able to make use of it in the way that I've just showed in that small demo. 
So if you've set up multiple different pies across various rooms, walking from one to the other, you should see that that switches and changes to the next room. And that's it for now, guys. I'm sorry that it was such a short demo, but I will be back with a part four. And in part four, we're going to be going through how to make use of scripts and automations using the current room assistant setup that we've got now. And I will be creating a video on a more advanced configuration for room assistant. And if you're using multiple room assistants, this one will be handy for you. So yeah, potentially another two room assistant videos to come. If you're currently at this state where you've got room assistant working and you can move between multiple different ones, um, and you don't have to wait for my next videos, I definitely recommend you go and check out the Room Assistant website. Again, that's linked in the description below. Go and read through some of that documentation and see what you can actually get working. And if you come up with something really cool or you find a much, much simpler configuration, then feel free to drop that in the description and share it with other people. If you have enjoyed this video, don't forget to drop me a like rating. If you press that subscribe button and hit the notification bell, you'll be alerted to whenever those next videos come out. And as always, thank you for watching and I'll catch you in the next one. Cheers.